Hey Fiber Friends, welcome to the For Knit Sakes channel. My name is Allison and I am coming to you from El Paso, Texas, where I live with my husband Jonathan, my two sons Levi and Oliver, and our fur baby Lucy. Today is Monday, December the 3rd of 2018. I know it has been about three weeks since last time I chatted with you guys, but I finally have plenty of content to show you and I've had lots of stuff come in the mail to share with you as well. So I decided to wait until after the holidays to podcast for you guys. I was going to do it last week, but then I started feeling sick and I couldn't breathe through my nose and I was sniffling and sneezing and it was a big mess. So I decided to wait until I got better before I could film for you guys and I have much more to show because of that. If you are new to the channel, you have come across my little corner of the internet where I mainly chat about knitting, a little bit about crochet and cross stitch, um, some sewing every once in a while, or any other sort of fabricy fiber craft that happens to catch my fancy. And if you are a returning viewer, welcome back. Sorry, I'm laughing because my text messages are showing up and I'm trying to schedule a, <laughs> a get together with some friends. And it was going to be during a time where John was gonna be out of town. So I asked if my kids could tag along cause they're old enough they can keep themselves occupied. And somebody just joked that they would bring a kennel and I was gonna make that joke, but I hadn't gotten to the text messaging part yet. So I'm just laughing. Sorry if I'm a little distracted. Um, I would say that this podcast is going to be put together and very organized, but it's never like that. And so I'm never going to promise that to you guys. <laughs> so thank you for coming back. If you're a returning viewer and if you are new and you like what you see, like and subscribe, tell your friends. We do have a knit along that is going on right now and you can find that in the Ravelry group, which I will put a link in the description box below, or you can go to the groups tab on Ravelry and put in four knit sakes. You can also find me on social media on Ravelry and Instagram under four knit sakes. And I'll put that down here in a little bar, a little add in that iMovie lets me put in. And if you are participating in the knit along, it is a gift miss knit along. If anything that you are knitting for friends or family or anybody other than yourself, you can submit it into the FO thread, which I finally put on the groups tab. I'm terribly sorry it took me so long. There is a chatter thread and then there is an, a finished object thread. Be sure to put your finished objects into that thread so you can be put in for a chance to win your choice of any pattern on Ravelry as long as it does not exceed $8. And that is going until January the 1st. So you have another month ish to put that together if I remember to close the thread on January 1st. There's no other uh, rules or regulations on the knit along whips are allowed so if you've been working on something you have unfinished objects finish them up and put them in the finished objects thread so <sighs> I chatted very quickly through those last three minutes and we will hop in I'm going to skip the prompt for this week I know you guys all look forward to those questions that I ask, but the book's up there. I don't feel like getting it right now. So I'm going to hop in to finish objects. And the first thing I'm going to share is Oliver's temperature blanket. I have finished it minus I haven't knotted the ends on one side and trimmed the ed or trimmed the fringe. If you are new to the podcast, I made both of my boys temperature blankets for the first year that they were alive. I did the high temperatures for where we were living and I showed Levi's blanket last time and I powered through and I finished Oliver's blanket. It's going to be a little difficult to show. Um, I had trouble finding a good spot and lighting is kind of less than desirable today. So <laughs> sorry about that. And I'm still sniffly, so I'm going to apologize for how much I'm going to sniffle throughout the podcast, and I hope it doesn't bother any of you too much. So, Oliver just had his fifth birthday, so he was a November baby, almost a turkey baby on certain years, depending on when Thanksgiving lands. I need to slow down. Excuse me. So, he was born in November in Germany, so his blanket is a lot of blues... A little bit of purple and then when we get into the fall and summer months there's a little bit of red a lot more green and then ends up with a lot more blue at the end so I did all of this using yarn I could get at Michaels so it's a mixture of Karen simply soft red heart soft and loops and threads soft and shiny so I do have a fair amount of leftover yarn so I'm probably just going to knit a rainbow blanket for project Linus just so I'm not wasting any of that yarn. And since we're moving in less than a year, I'm trying to get rid of 
stuff that's not you like things I'm not going to use in my stash and then there's yarn that I picked up from Project Linus meetings that I need to knit or crochet into blankets and donate so then I'm not moving with it to Alaska but I'll talk more about that later and I just did a 150 cast on on a US 9 sorry a US 9 needle and then I just knit one row per day for 365 days. It is about a five foot long blanket, maybe a little bit shorter, but perfect for my kids because they're still small and it covers their whole body at the moment and it stretches really well. So they will get lots of use out of it and I'm hoping the yarn holds up. I've never knit a blanket from any of this yarn before. So I'm hoping it doesn't pill too much, but it's holding up fairly well so far, but I also haven't washed them yet, so. If anybody has suggestions on best to watch, wash stuff that has all this fringe, they are knotted at the end, so there's, they're not loose by any means. But if there's any suggestions on hopefully to make this last longer, let me know. The next finished object I have is my sister's socks. Um, I'm surprised at the socks that everybody is choosing for me to knit them. I'll send them pictures of what I have in my stash and I'll let them choose the yarn that they want socks made out of and my dad started the 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 trend of wild socks for this year because his yarn was very Halloween inspired with yellows and oranges and a little bit of browns and then when I sent my sister my picture of my stash she decided on this self-striping ice yarns that my a lovely viewer named Amy in New Zealand sent me and so I have finished hers I'm gonna back up so you guys can see I did them in opposite directions so technically if we wanted the stripes to go in the same way they would be this way but I was gonna have matchy matchy socks, but then I was worried about running out of yarn. So I decided to do them opposite and I did an afterthought heel and I love how the greens just matched up so then it looks like the heel matches them with the rest of the sock. So I did these on US zeros and 64 stitches. I did switch to a one and increase the stitches for the cuff because I have found that my cuffs are a little bit snug and a little bit difficult to get over my heel and when I'm knitting for other people I want them to fit really well so I went up to 68 stitches and I switched to a US 1 to do the cuff up here and I just did a plain 2x2 two two rib no twisted rib and I did a true afterthought heel I cut into the knitting picked up the stitches and then just decreased like I would if I were doing a cuff down sock for the toe and I did Judy's Magic Cast On to start the sock as well. So, these are finished and now I can send them to my sister along with the socks that I made for her daughters. I call them Wrap and Turn because their initials are W and T. I don't want to share their names on the podcast in case she's not comfortable with that. So that is another finished object and I did have one more and had I actually finished those if I had finished it last week and I'd had and I'd been feeling well, I would have shared it on the podcast, but I needed to mail it to Meg. She is Bad Wolf Girl Studios and she is also on YouTube. You can go check her out. I'll try to put a little link in the description box below. But she was looking for sample knitters to make um, a fingering brioche bandana cowl by Lavanya Patricella. And I've made one before and I messaged her and said I'd be more than happy to make one. I've made one before and she was paying in yarn who doesn't love free yarn, although my stash is getting a little out of hand. So she sent me the yarn and I do have the leftovers, but I do not have the finished object to share today because I had to mail it out. I will try to put a picture in, but for some reason, pictures that aren't taken on the day that I plug my phone into the computer don't show up to import. And I don't know why it's doing that. So my videos import perfectly fine, but if it's not a video or a picture that I've taken on that day, it won't show up on my iPhotos. And I have to go through like the web and my iCloud, and it's kind of a mess. But it is on my Instagram and it is on my project page on Ravelry. But I do have the two yarns that she sent for me to sample knit because those cowls don't take a whole lot of yarn. So I have enough to make a very nice pair of socks. And these are... Like I said before, Bad Wolf, Bad Wolf Girl Studios. Slow down, Allison. There's no rush. <sighs> Everybody take a breather and slow down a bit. Bad Wolf Girl Studios, and I believe this is in the colorway Shell Cottage, so it's a very bright green. It's kind of blowing out because I have, the sun is actually coming out in El Paso right now. 
with some specks of kind of like an electric green color. A little bit of blue that matches this one right here, which I'm pretty sure is Luna. This one wasn't labeled, but there was a label kind of floating around in the bag that said Luna. So I'm assuming this is the Luna colorway and Shell Cottage. So it made a very pretty brioche bandana cowl and I can't decide if I'm gonna make myself one of those or save these for some socks. But this is the leftovers and I'm excited to use it for something. I need a new ball winder. Do you guys see how messy this cake is? I have a Knit Picks winder that they sent me a new one of when my last one started making like snapping sounds. So like the gears obviously were getting caught when I was winding, but the balls shift up as you're winding. So I have to shove the ball back down so it doesn't fly off the winder. And then I get this messy cake situation, unfortunately. So that's a finished object that I don't have to show you because hopefully it's already in Meg's hands. I mailed it to her last week. I need to check the tracking on that. But the yarns looked really good together and you can check out the photo that I have on Instagram. So that is all I have for the finished objects that, I'm work that I've done. And I have a couple of works in progress. Um, as soon as I finished that bandana cow, I went and cast on three new projects, a pair of socks, a shawl, and a sweater. And I've mainly been working on the sweater because I wanted to wear it this Thursday to my Knitting Guild Christmas party. But it's supposed to be 69 degrees and it's a worsted weight sweater, so I don't think I'm gonna get to wear it. I'll probably hold off on finishing it and maybe pick up some other projects while I'm at it. So I decided to cast on the Weekender sweater by Andrea Mowry. And I have done the body and I have finished the front or the back. I think, I don't remember which one it is. So I can show you, but it's a little awkward because you knit the body from the bottom up and then you separate for the sleeves and then you knit the front or the back. It's the same, both front and back. So this is being blown out, of course. Great, let's see if we can do it on this side. There we go. So the neck has been bound off here and I have some stitches on hold right here. And then I am working on the back side. Nothing super exciting. You're just basically knitting a panel until you get to the upper ribbing. I did not do the tubular cast on for this. I just did a German twisted cast on for the bottom. Now I'm doing this in Lion Brand Wool Ease, which is an Aran weight instead of a worsted. So I decided to use the middle needle size that is asked for in the pattern. She asked for three different needle sizes depending on the ribbing, the cast, or the bind off and the body, <laughs> sorry. So I decided to use a US 8 on the body and I am knitting the smallest size because the smallest size is supposed to give you a 39 inch bust and you're supposed to wear it with 10 inches of positive ease but I didn't want that much ease but I knew my gauge and the yarn would give me more than 39 inches so I decided on the smallest size and I'm definitely getting bigger than 40 inches. So I am gonna have some positive ease when all of this is said and done. I'm not a huge fan of bottom-up sweaters because you can't really try them on until they're finished and especially with this when you have a front panel and a back panel that has isn't joined until the very end. I can't try it on until I finish the back panel. So I'm kind of crossing my fingers that it's not going to look terrible on me. I know that these kinds of shapes of sweaters aren't the best but it looked really comfy and cozy and would be great to wear around the house when it's cold because I keep the thermostat fairly low during the winter because if it's going to be 56 degrees outside, I don't need to have my heat set at 70. Plus that's really expensive and not great for the environment. So I can't really share a whole lot about this. Oh, the sun's coming out, yay! Until it's done, but I'm hoping it's going to be done soon. Like I said, since it's supposed to be so warm on Thursday, I'm probably not going to wear this to my knitting guild because I don't like to be hot. So I'm probably gonna wear a fingering weight sweater instead that's already finished. So. The Weekender by Andrea Mowry, nothing super fancy. Lion Brand Wool Ease in Navy, which is an 80-20 acrylic and wool blend. So I'm also a little worried about it not blocking well and the neck is kind of small. Right now the neck only goes from here to here. So I don't know if that's going to stretch or not. I might, when I'm done, I might have to take apart the sweater and adjust so the neck's like not up here, but we'll see. I've never knit a sweater with wool ease, so it's going to be interesting to see how that's going to end up. 
when it's all said and done. The other things that I have cast on, throw that on the floor, I cast on a pair of socks, the Evergreen Socks by Madeline Gannon. I got this pattern last year when Amy Florence of Stranded Dye Works was knitting them and Madeline had offered a coupon code for people to purchase them. I will, I have not done a whole lot because like I said, I've been kind of concentrating on getting my weekender sweater done. So I've only done a couple rows of the chart down here and obviously the cuff up here. This is Kramer yarn. It's got a silver Stellina. You can see the sparkle in there a little bit. But the pattern is a lace chart that makes it look like you have Christmas trees on your socks. So I wanted to get these done by Christmas, but I'm not sure if I'm, that's going to happen unless they start to buckle down and work on it. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to knit the charts, the chart for one sock and knit the second sock for the chart, join two at a time and knit all the way down until I'm finished. So instead of doing one whole sock and then doing the second sock, I think I'm going to knit the chart separately, join and then finish them two at a time. So this is what the yarn looks like. It's in Masters Green, which I think is a golf reference. Sorry. I didn't think I would be this sniffly this morning. It's only when I start recording and then I have to clear my nose all the time. And that's being held in a Lone Larch, um, Lone Larch bag. I didn't know if it was Lone Larch Designs or not. So that is um, Jenny who lives up in Canada. And I got this from Soprano Knits who is Becky. She lives in Germany. She was doing a stash, and I picked it up because I've always wanted one of Lone Larch's bags. And then my last thing that I cast on, knitting wise, I do have one crochet project, is Melanie Berg's from her shawl book, The Decemberist Shawl. I will show you the picture. I have not gotten very far. It is a bulky weight shawl using fairly big needles. I went down needle size than what the pattern called for because I was worried that I would not have enough yarn. There's another picture that has a better wingspan picture right here. And I'm doing this with Knit Picks Wool of the Andes, bulky, and I've had this yarn for quite a while. I had actually already knit some projects from it, a infinity cowl and a hat, and I ripped those out because I wasn't wearing them, and I decided to knit this, but like I said, I am not that far. So, the only thing I've really been working on is that sweater, and then this. The majority of this podcast is going to be sharing all the yarn that I've gotten recently. It is, start. you start from the center. And you work your way out and so right now I'm just doing all the increases in the stockinette stitch and the lace edging at the end easy peasy her book is beautiful so if you if you're on the fence about getting it I have three projects that I want to knit from it and I'll probably end up knitting more so I figured if I knit at least three from the book then it was worth buying plus it's beautiful and the pictures are really pretty and nice to look at so and this is just being held in a bag that I made myself quite a while ago from some vintage fabric that my mom gave me. So I love it because it's this bright yellow and I have a fun red zipper and the inside is just a plain green. So very plain and simple. It's definitely an at home project because there's purling involved and I like to have something very plain and simple to work on when I'm out of the house which is in my purse and I did not bring that up but it's just a pair of vanilla socks in a three by one rib and I've showed them before and they're not very far from the last time I showed them so nothing interesting to show there. Now I did mention that I am trying to get through all of my acrylic stash and I'm trying to get through the yarn that I have taken from Project Linus because they have a bag, uh, not a bag, a table full of yarn that we can choose from to make blankets so we're not having to buy the yarn ourselves. We obviously can buy the yarn ourselves, but they provide some of it with funds that we get from doing fundraisers and raffles and I think we've done a Christmas event. I haven't been in quite a long time because the boys soccer games were on Saturdays. So now that soccer is over, I can start going to Project Linus. So now I'm trying to get those blankets done. So I did start a corner to corner blanket with some yarn that I had sitting around. It is pink and purple. So very bright. Let me try to not rip any stitches out. 
I am on the decreases now, so I have done this much. I had this purple left over from doing a flan like a flannel blanket or a fleece blanket. So I did that for the middle. And I picked up two skeins of this flamingo pink yarn. This is just Red Heart Super Saver. It's nothing fancy. I don't like knitting with Super Saver, but crocheting isn't as bad. So I'm just doing the decreases now. And if I sit and buckle down and finish this, I could probably finish this within the weekend. I was trying to do something that I could work on while binge watching Ugly Betty, which is what I've been doing while I was sick. But hopefully this will be done and then I can bring it to the January meeting and then I have about two more blankets worth of yarn that I need to get through before that I would feel good about finishing so I don't bring that yarn with us to Alaska. Whew! That's all the finished objects and all the works in progress that I have. I have a lot of stash acquisitions to share. Every year on Instagram, there is a get your yarn wishes granted. I have sent off, I sent off three things of yarn and I think I might have gifted a pattern. I don't remember. It's been a couple weeks. It happened around the Veterans Day weekend when everybody started and I have received quite a lot and I am so gracious, I, like so thankful that this community is so giving and selfless most of the time. I mean, you some, in every group of people, you always kind of run into a couple of bad apples, but I ha honestly haven't run into many of them or any now that I can really think of it. And people were so generous in giving gifts this year. So I've had one, two, three, four people send me yarn. And oh, I didn't get one of them. It's um, some Felici. I'm gonna go grab it out of the thing and then I'll just edit this out. Okay, so I put out on for my yarn wishes, I wasn't super specific. Um, I think I might have mentioned one indie dyer for my wishes, but I mainly, I was in a self-striping mood, so I asked for any sort of self-striping yarn or if anybody had any yarns in blues or purples, fingering weight, just to see what would happen. If I wasn't gonna get any response, no big deal. Yarn is yarn. And then um, when I followed the hashtag on Instagram, I did find one very generous lady. Man, she was offering up a lot of her stash. If anybody wanted it, I just said, hey, if this one's available, I would like to have this one. So let's start with the yarn that I got from Rosalie on Instagram. I should have wrote her Instagram handle. I will find it and I'll put it in the thing below. So she sent me a skein of Brew City Yarns. It's like this very purpley gray. And it is the colorway wine in a sippy cup. Perfect, right? I've actually done that many times in the past. So there's a couple little tiny blue speckles on there. And she also sent me a skein of her own yarn in this purple and blue color. She is Yarn Matrix. And she also took over for Happy Scrappy Life to do scrappy swaps. You can find her, I'll, like I said, I'll find her Instagram handle and I'll put it down here. And this is Blueberry, Stromuberry, I think. But perfect name, nice little blueberry color. So she, she sent me these two. I didn't know what they were looking, what they were gonna look like. She said she was just gonna send me a blue, or a purple tonal. And so she sent this and this as an extra. Um, Danielle, who I think is Happy Hooker with Sticks on Instagram, she was the one I followed the hashtag and she had a whole bunch up and I chose the Easy Peasy Lemon Squeezy from Lolo Did It. So this is my first Lolo Did It skein. It's got this electric yellow green, some orange, a little bit of purple, gray. I'm very interested to see how this is going to knit up. It is 7525 Superwash and nylon so these will probably become socks just because it's so fun I don't I don't know what else I would do with it but it's really pretty and then oh I'll show you guys the bad wolf girl skein that she sent me I forget the colorway name but I found this on her Etsy page and it has sparkles in it so blue and purple like this is pretty much all I've been knitting with recently is blues and purples if you can see it goes very well with the colorways behind me on my swatch board so um this is what i got for knitting her brioche bandana cowl 
I'm not sure what it will become, but who doesn't love glittery socks? So they'll probably become socks. Let's face it, my stash is getting a little out of hand and I'm probably going to be doing some de-stashing before we move. And then Amy, I forget what her Instagram name, it starts with a D, but she said she had a Felici colorway that had blues in it that she would send me. And so she sent me this Beyond the Wall, which I'm pretty sure is a reference to Game of Thrones because of the blues and the grays. It reminds me of the White Walkers from Beyond the Wall in Game of Thrones. So. If I'm right and you know that, let me know in the comments below. If I'm being ridiculous and I am not correct, let me know that too. So I'm very excited. My husband claimed it, claimed this yarn, but he doesn't realize it's best used for socks. And I've knit him socks before and he never wears them. Although he did put on a pair of socks during Thanksgiving break and he's like, oh, my feet are so nice and warm. Maybe I should wear these more often. I was like, hmm, right? So then maybe my husband will start wearing some socks. But she sent me this and some, uh, it's my favorite, the Dove Peppermint Dark Chocolate. Chocolate? It was so good. I, I definitely ate all of those within the first day. And then I had a lovely viewer message me during Thanksgiving break saying that she had some yarns in her stash that she wanted to... Um, gift and so she sent me a couple messages on Ravelry. Ravelry. Her name is Connie. She's friends with um, Carrie of the Creative Obsession and or um, maybe just internet friends. I don't know if she's friends in real life or not. But she sent me a couple pictures and so she had a bunch of self-striping and a couple of nitpicks and I said well I really like this um, mustache yarn and this cozy knitter. Whatever you choose surprise me. And she Holy moly surprised me. So Connie, if you were watching, thank you so much. I, I already told you I, I teared up when I saw what was in the package. I wasn't expecting it. And I'm always amazed at the generosity of knitters. So I don't know if I'll be keeping all this because Connie also said that, you know, it's just material things. We can always replace yarn and material things. She had to evacuate last year during a fire. And so she, she packed up all of her yarn and made her realize that it's just, it's just material items, and I've been trying to work on that as I'm getting older. It's hard to let go of things sometimes, but after reading that, it made me think of the things in my stash that I don't need, and the things that I can share with other people. If I'm not going to use it, somebody else can get joy from it, but she sent me an amazing package. She sent me two skeins of yarn and a bunch of extra goodies, so... My youngest, Oliver, helped me open up my package because he likes opening up gifts and he likes to get things in the mail. So I said, okay, well, you can help me open these things. So he helped me open up my package the day that it came. So she sent me the mustache yarn that I said that I liked the look of. I love rainbows. Who doesn't? And this is in uh, Martian Rainbow. It is two skeins of perfectly matching sock yarn to make matching stripy socks. So that's very exciting. Those will definitely get knit. And then she also sent me this cozy knitter sock set in Ocean View, which surprisingly, I used to live in Ocean View in Norfolk, Virginia. So this will probably, this, this will definitely get knit up just because of the name of it. It's, um, it's a place where I used to live and it's Ocean View and I used to live by the bay and I miss the water where we've lived in landlocked countries and states since living in Norfolk. So Ocean View by the Cozy Knitter. And she sent me this beautiful bag. Surprisingly, it's the Creative Obsession. Carrie, I got one of your bags, woohoo! And she stuffed it full of cool, fun things. That's the Cozy Knitter tag. She sent me some tuft woolens, which I've been wanting to try for a very long time. She sent me two of the lanolin hand and body balms that are in this like deodorant style container so you twist them up to use them. She sent me Never an Old Maid and Emma's Tea Rose. And then she sent me two lip balms, Champagne Bubbles and Regency Fig. I might end up putting a little package together as um, a future giveaway if I keep podcasting. And then she also sent me a little bag of stitch markers, which I never have the big ones. I end up using hair ties that I obviously don't use right now because my hair is not long enough for hair ties. And... She also sent me these Chiago, Chiago Twist Minis. These are US ones, I believe. And a 37 inch cord with the attachments and everything. So these will definitely get used because I love Chiago needles. And this is where 
like I almost started crying because I have said on the podcast that I cannot afford signature needle art needles. She sent me US size one stiletto tip needles. She said she the cord drives her crazy, which I can kind of see that. The cords remind me a little bit of Haya Haya. They're not super stiff. So if I don't end up loving these, I will definitely be passing them on to somebody else. We share the love and I am all more into the giving mood these days to help share. So be on the lookout. I need to try them first to see if they will work for me. If not, I will pass them on. We'll see. But I just could not believe the generosity of the knitting community and the things that people put together to send to basically complete strangers because I have never met any of these people in my life. So it definitely makes me want to share the love a little bit more in the future. I need to definitely go through my stash and looking at my bookcase. My stash isn't huge, but it's definitely way more than I can knit in a year, even with not having a job and I can sit during the day if I don't have anything else to do and knit while my children are in school. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I can't say thank you enough. It definitely brought my day up because I wasn't feeling well and it showed up the second day when I started to feel really crummy and I really, I felt like there was an elephant sitting on my face. My teeth were hurting because my sinuses were so inflamed. So it definitely made that day a lot better. Now, some yarn that I have ordered because Knit Picks was having their big sale uh, I ordered a couple sweaters quantities during the sale because I could get three sweaters quantities and I got two sock blanks for my children to dye to knit socks, obviously. During their sale, everything was less than $100. Or no, I spent just at $100 to get a free project bag. So that's sitting underneath over here. Let me hopefully grab it without causing too many issues. So I usually wait to buy everything during sales. I don't like to pay full price for things just because our budgets are slightly small these days until I can get a job, which I'm working on. So I got this little unicorn bag with a little knitter on it, super cute. So this was my free item and I ordered sweaters quantities and three different yarns. I tried to find the ones that were most on sale but still colors that I enjoyed. So this Knit Pick Stroll was half off so I got four skeins for $24 and it is the sunny afternoon hand painted and I think I am going to do a color work sweater there's a little bit of blue in here so I'm not sure if I'm going to maybe use this blue here as the contrasting color or maybe a blue that looks more like this top one or the bottom one I mean from the cozy dinner so I may have to make a little order to find a blue to go with that if Carrie excuse me I have to put a notification away. If Carrie of the Creative Session has poolside still in her shop, I might order a skein of that to go with this. I also ordered a sweaters quantity to do a humulus sweater because my last one failed miserably and it was way too big. So I'm gonna try again. I think I'm gonna do the humulus sweater in this one. This is opal heather and just the wool of the Andes, non super wash. I like how nice and like there's a little bit of like purples in there and blues. It's very, if you think of an opal and how multifaceted it is, it is in all the different colors, then this definitely fits the bill. So I have 11 skeins of this, I believe. And then I want a nice Tweety sweater. And I can't decide if I'm gonna do my Humulus sweater in the Papaya Heather, that's upside down. <laughs> And this is just Wool of the Andes Tweed, and this was the most expensive, and I still bought a sweater's quantity, I think, for less than $40. You can't buy a hand-knit sweater or even a machine-knit sweater for that price in the um, department stores. So I can't decide if I'm going to do my Humulus in this with a natural-colored contrasting color or this with a navy blue or maybe a, a cream off-white color. I can't decide. But the other one is gonna become a gingerbread sweater. And I will put the, the name and the designer on the bottom. But I'm very excited about these sweaters, especially with moving to Alaska. So, and then I got two sock blanks. They are um, stored underneath one of the beds right now. I did not realize that they were double-stranded sock blanks, so I will have to knit the socks two at a time, which isn't my favorite. I will do it, but I would I knit much faster when I'm not having to do yarn management. But I think I'm gonna have the boys dye them at some point 
maybe after we move to Alaska so I can knit socks either for them or for somebody else in the family. So that was a lot of stash acquisitions. And again, I can't believe the generosity of this knitting community. It's amazing. I'm so thankful to be a part of it. And I know my following is fairly small, but those of you that comment always make me smile and that send me messages. And it's what keeps me going. It's what keeps me podcasting. So that is all of the knitting and fiber content. So if you don't want to hear anything about what's been going on over the last three weeks or about our upcoming move, you're more than welcome to get on about your day and I will hopefully see you next time. If you want to hang out, grab something to drink, grab your knitting. I will try to keep it short because I'm at 36-ish minutes now and tell you about what's been going on since November the 8th, since last time I chatted with you guys. Bye if you're leaving and I will see you guys next time. <sighs> okay, it's been quite a busy couple of weeks. We have, we had my dad fly in for Thanksgiving break and for Oliver's birthday and Thanksgiving. We don't do a traditional Thanksgiving anymore because we don't want to try to gluten-free pies and stuffing and everything. So what we do is we do ribs now and we do like cookout food. So we had potatoes and ribs. My dad picked some up from Costco and he's the one that got those done. It's also great because ribs only take two hours to cook as opposed to turkey which takes all flipping day to cook. So we did that and we had broccoli salad, very small. There was just the three adults and the two kids and we ended up buying tickets to go see the new Wreck-It Ralph movie that afternoon because Oliver's birthday was the next day so that was part of his birthday present for all of us to go see Wreck-It Ralph and while my dad was here we also checked out Top Golf. so my kids and I got to golf for the first time my dad's not like an he's like an amateur golfer he'll go golfing with um, people that he works with and he likes to go to Top Golf. he's a lot more experienced than we are in it but it was fun the boys really liked it there was a gluten-free option that Oliver could eat that did not make him sick which was really great so I ended up getting them a gift card for Top Golf to go in their stocking so we can go sometime it's usually cheaper during the weekend on Tuesdays, at least here in the El Paso location, it's half off so we can get more bang for our buck if we were to go on Tuesdays. We'll probably go during um, 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 we'll probably go during the holiday break because they get a good two and a half weeks off for the holidays this year. And what else did we do? We went to White Sands with my dad so we went sledding again. I We've done that before with my mother-in-law. And that was really fun and then the boys started up back at school so they've had one full week and then they have two more full weeks and a half week before the holidays so we are trucking along to get to the holiday break get through December um, we have found out our move date got moved up to August for Alaska so we have been approved to go we've started all the paperwork we have to get doctor's appointments done everybody has to get physicals in order to go through the exceptional family members program screening that you have to do if you're going overseas I know Alaska is part of the like the United States but for the military Alaska and Hawaii are considered overseas locations because I guess the distance to travel to Alaska makes it that way so we all have to go through all of that um, I've had to make new specialist appointments for Oliver and trying to keep track of everything. We're going to have to sell one of our cars and buy a new one, which we've already planned on doing. It's just my mental list is getting longer and like I'll cross one thing off and three more things get added. So one step at a time, we got to take care of the the smallest fires first or the most the the fires that are closest and then take care of the other fires. Not actual fires, obviously. So it's just been a little overwhelming because we have to renew passports and all this other stuff. And because everything got moved up two months, John wants to be packed out and leave El Paso before July. So we're in Alaska, ready to go, settled before school starts. Hopefully if I can get a teaching job, then I'll be there ready to go because we always have to do orientation and training and or at least I had to do that in Norfolk. I'm assuming most school districts are the same, but then I also have to renew my teaching license and that involves online training and 
CPR AED class and getting my transcripts and sending all that in and ah, it's going to get done. Everything is fine. <laughs> I keep telling myself that one step at a time and we will get there and it will be fine. It always happens. And it's just as soon as you get recovered from one PCS, you're preparing for another one because we've only been here for less than two years. We got here at the very tail end of December in 2016, and we're moving again June, July 2019. Life of the military, but hopefully Alaska will definitely be three years, maybe six. Um, the only thing we're worried about is Alaska did have a pretty sizable 7.0, 7.2 earthquake on Friday so there's actually one member of the band that their house was considered unsafe the garage sank eight feet into the ground their car is stuck in there they can't even get into their house to get their belongings so they're having to completely rebuild um, I, we know a lot of friends that lived on post they lost power for most of the day and then they're having some pretty ridiculous weather they've had some really bad wind storms over the weekend they're supposed to get like 12 inches of snow I think tomorrow or some, maybe even today. So hopefully all of our Alaska friends are doing well and I'm tried not to talk to my kids about it because Levi stresses about like, you know, tornadoes. He doesn't want to live in Tornado Valley. He's been really big into weather. So he follows all this stuff. He doesn't live, want to live where there are hurricanes. So like pretty much anywhere off on the East Coast is not gonna happen. But we don't get to choose with the military. They say, you're going here, enjoy. So, life is a little overwhelming, but it will be okay. One step at a time, one day at a time. John has his holiday concert tomorrow. I have my Knitting Guild holiday party on Thursday, which I'm very excited. I need to find a gift to bring. Usually people bring yarn. I might make a trip to Marshall's and maybe find like a coffee mug or some chocolates or something to add in there. But maybe I'll just go through my stash and pick out some, some skeins of yarn that would make like a pretty shawl or something and and do it that way i'm not quite sure yet so we'll see and i also was thinking about making a little project bag to put in there as well we don't have a lot of sock knitters in the guild which i'm going to try to change i am the vice president for this year so i'm trying to plan uh, teaching them the basics of sock knitting by starting um, a stocking first so basically just making a big giant sock first and then teaching them short rows so they can do the heel and then just like the construction. So maybe I can make some sock knitters out of these ladies. They, a couple of people have voiced that they want to learn how to, want to learn how to knit socks. So I'm thinking I'm going to do that for the February and March meetings by doing the structures of socks and then teaching them how to knit stockings and then giving them a couple of free sock patterns that they can go home and they can try to knit themselves. But <sighs> everything will be fine. I keep telling myself that. So I know I chatted a whole lot this week and I still kept it relatively short, but I know I talked very fast. So I, I would apologize for that, but that's just how I am in real life. <laughs> if you met me, you know that I talk a lot. I word vomit frequently because I'm at home with kids all day. And when I get to talk to adults, it's a free for all. <laughs> But I am going to let you guys go and let you get on about your day. Hopefully I will see you guys before the new year, but I can't make any promises as always because my kids are out of school starting on the 20th and my mother-in-law will be here from Christmas through the 29th. So it will probably be after the new year and I will be choosing people for the gift miss knit along or make along. I should make it a make along maybe. And uh, hopefully I will see you guys next time. If you like what you saw, like and subscribe and comment below so I know that you guys saw me and say hi, send me messages, and I hope you guys all have a great holiday, whether you're celebrating Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, Christmas, or you're not celebrating anything at all. You're just celebrating winter and the cold weather that hopefully will come soon. Minus in El Paso because it's supposed to be 70 degrees on Thursday. What you gonna do? <laughs> I will hopefully see you guys soon and um. Follow me what's going on on Instagram, and I hope you all stay well and not get sick. Keep your needles moving. Keep busy, and I will talk to you guys later. Love you. Bye.